Last week, I was called to see a young woman who came with a high-grade fever and low blood pressure. I immediately noticed the sunburn-like skin rash which occupied nearly her entire body skin. The doctors at ETU had resuscitated her, and now it was our job to find what was wrong with her. After a long workup, we diagnosed her with a life-threatening condition called toxic shock syndrome. Exfoliative dermatitis is a fancy term for a rash characterized by redness and peeling skin. When the rash occupies more than 90% of the body surface, the condition is called erythroderma, which is a dermatological emergency. Toxic shock syndrome is characterized by erythroderma, fever, and low blood pressure. Notice these antigens on invading bacteria. A type of white cells called antigen-presenting cells, or APC, take up these antigens process them, and express on cell membranes. APC can identify the invaders, but they are not powerful bacteria killers. So, they will go and inform T-cells, a more powerful type of white cells, by presenting captured antigens through MHC class II proteins. Though there are many T-cells, only the specific T-cells will recognize the antigen, activate, and release cytokines. Cytokines are signaling molecules that will create chaos by mediating inflammation. Toxic shock syndrome occurs when bacteria hijack the immune system with some toxins called superantigens. Some strains of Staphylococcus aureus release superantigens called TSS1 antigen. They will directly bind to MHC molecules and activate even nonspecific T cells. This polyclonal T cell activation will cause a cytokine storm, which will result in a massive multi-system inflammation. In addition to the skin, it will also affect other systems and result in renal failure, liver failure, muscle damage, gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea, confusion due to the involvement of the central nervous system, and also low platelet counts. Staphylococcus aureus is a usual habitant of our body surface. It can colonize on tampons in menstruating women and become a source of infection. In neonates and children, the bacteria can enter the body through small skin lesions and produce toxic shock syndrome. Another type of bacteria called Group A Streptococcus also can produce superantigens and cause a similar syndrome. Some people call this identical syndrome toxic shock-like syndrome, or TSLS. The diagnosis is mainly clinical. Since the disease is caused by a toxin, the bacteria will not be isolated in cultures taken from blood, throat, or CSF. We arranged ICU care for the patient and started her on broad-spectrum antibiotics. IV fluids were given to correct the severe dehydration. The source of infection, the tampon, was removed. Some patients might go into shock and develop cardiorespiratory and renal failures. These patients will need inotrope support, ventilation support, and renal replacement therapy. Fortunately, our patient recovered well after a week in the ICU. If you liked the video, please press the like button and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Take care.